Chief Forbes is with me here at the mall at Short Hills, New Jersey. That's where we're broadcasting today's show, Kivito Coast to Coast from. And um, we'll talk a lot about shopping throughout the next couple of hours here. Of course, it's Black Friday. But, Steve, the other thing that's come up as we watch these protests is issues that maybe had not been at the forefront with its community relations with the police and uh, certainly race relations. Looks like they're back for the 2016 race. What do you think that'll mean? I think uh, this all goes to the stagnant economy we have. Over half the American workforce, real wages are still lower than they were five or six years ago. They don't see big raises coming. People are frustrated. Why aren't things getting better? Unfortunately, the White House, instead of pointing out the real problems in many of these areas in America, uh, seems almost want to inflame rather than uh, get to root causes. So you think there's a lot more to it than, and, and, and as I said to the mayor in our last section, in this case, I think it's fair to say most of us who have seen the video say this is outrageous. I mean, maybe there's more to it, but from what we've seen, boy, this is horrible what happened to but this it, young man, regardless of what, you know, he, they were investigating him for doing. But you think there's more to it? what we're seeing in the streets than simply that, than simply a video and people are upset about seeing it. Well, people would be upset, anyway, but I think right. uh, uh, coming in the current environment where people feel that the economy is not moving, that the only way you get a raise is by uh, protesting and getting a minimum wage, the retailers are under real pressure, Walmart's earnings are down and uh, because, of, uh, because of the uh, stagnant economy and also they gave raises to their workers came right off the bottom line. Let's talk about that a little bit. We're here at a shopping mall, and it's Black Friday. It's supposed to be, if not the busiest, one of the busiest shopping days that we'll see this season. There are a lot of people here, and you'll hear that all over the news. People say, oh, there's a lot of people at the mall. Bottom line is, it's very tough for us to quantify, you know, percentage-wise, at noon on Black Friday what the sales are going to be. I know a lot of people will write stories about it. But how is the economy doing, in your view, from what you see and from the numbers that you analyze? How would you describe it? Still in second gear. Occasionally we get in third gear, but still stuck in second gear. And that's part of the frustration. Uh, the, the Democrats, the liberals are right that most of this recovery is going to the top 10% of the, uh, of the economy. Yeah. Uh, the other 90% are still struggling, and half the workers are seeing actual decline in the standard of living. You don't think we're starting to see some signs? And by, this ball, by the way, just from what's behind it, this is the... This is the high end. I mean, there's a, some high end stores. You'd be, you'd be comfortable here, Mr. Forbes. I don't know about myself and Neil Nasca. No, but the you, you'd be comfortable anywhere. Yeah, no, yes. <laughs> but the the idea is that the numbers, and sometimes the numbers don't connect directly from what the anecdotal evidence tells us. We do start to see wages start to inch up a little bit. The jobs numbers are getting a little bit better. The economic data seems to say that the economy is improving, but you still think we're not at the point where we really feel it, huh? Not where people really feel, hey, the future's good, I'm going to splurge now. Yeah. Finally, we see some real relief. People are very uncertain. That's why lower gas prices haven't really hyped retail sales. People are paying down credit card debt. They just aren't sure this thing is for real. Isn't that a really good point, though, when you think about it? We're going to talk about it later. Tom Close is coming on to talk about oil prices and gas prices in general. You would think, I mean, we're paying nothing for gas compared to what we were, that that would really have... Uh led to more than it has, right, for the consumer? Well, this is a real contrast to the 1980s, where you had a collapse in oil prices going with a booming economy. But back then, we had massive tax cuts. We were deregulating. Uh, the economy was booming. And so people, even though uh, so when gas prices went down, people yep. said, yes, this is good. We're going to have to shop. People are so still so shell-shocked today, numb from what happened in this punk recovery. They're saying, better be a little cautious. Let me go back um, to Chicago for a moment in the context of talking about 2016 a little bit. Just forget about the Democratic race for a moment and Hillary Clinton there and, and, uh, and Bernie Sanders and what have you. But on the Republican side, the fact that these are the pictures we're looking at in Chicago today, the fact that this story is back in the news, along with the foreign policy story and the worries about terrorism and everything else, how do you think it's impacted the race? Well, the whole thing happening overseas, people feel things are just spinning out of control. That attack on France was almost as if it was an attack on the United States. People felt it could happen in Paris on that scale. By golly, it can happen anywhere. Huge decline in confidence that we're really on top of this. So it helps so, uh, Rubio, Trump. I mean, how do you... It, it helped Trump. It's helping Rubio. Uh, Cruz is trying to uh, play off of it. So is uh, Chris Christie and uh, Jeb Bush. But it hurts Ben but, Carson. I mean, I know he's going over to a refugee camp, apparently, in Jordan, um, um, to, I guess, make some points about a big story that's been in the news. But he's been hurt by this, right? He has. And uh, uh, Rand Paul has been hurt as well, even though he's got a good base. Uh, people are feeling, hey, we have to take some extraordinary measures. This is real. Real lives are at stake. Uh, if the NSA wants to try to correlate uh, phone calls, that's fine. They're not listening. 
uh, do a little more data mining, hey, we need to do it. We've got real bad people out there. All right, enjoy your time. We dragged you out here, so let's get some shopping done maybe while you're at the mall, Steve. Okay, let's get the <laughs> stimulate the economy. Exactly, yes. do your part. Uh, Steve Forbes with us here in New Jersey.